Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you how to run PSP games on your Android device, be it an Android tablet, an Android phone, or even an Android TV box. Now keep in mind, when it comes to emulation on Android, it really depends on how powerful your phone is. But luckily, PSP doesn't require that much power. There are some games that are definitely harder to emulate than others, but as long as your device has at least a Snapdragon 450 or higher or equivalent, like the MediaTek P22, you should be good to go with a ton of different PSP games. The tablet I'm using right now is the Samsung Galaxy S7 Plus, which has that Snapdragon 865 Plus, and it does an amazing job with emulation, but you don't need something this high-end to do PSP. I do personally recommend using a controller to play your PSP games on your Android device, but you can always use the built-in touchscreen if you want to. But before we get started here, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. And if you're not familiar with Skillshare, it's an online learning community. You can basically learn how to do pretty much anything. From playing the guitar, to pixel art animation, or even learning how to manage your small business. I've been using this for the past few months, and my main interest on Skillshare is actually coding. Python, Arduino, and even learning how to set up and use Docker with Linux. I've actually been using something called Python Coding from Beginner to Advanced by John Harper. He explains everything you need in great detail. And like the title says, this will get you up and running with Python if you're a beginner, all the way up to advanced users. So he's got something for everybody in there. And as for Docker containers, this is something I've actually never messed around with, so I'm taking Docker Containers for Beginners by Dan Tofen, and the lesson is only six parts. I actually thought this was much more complicated than it is, but he explains it very easily, and I'm up and running with Docker Containers now. No matter what you're looking to learn about, I'm sure there's something on Skillshare that'll suit you. From fine art, music and video production, film and video, marketing, illustration, graphic design, creative writing, animation web development, crafts, and like I mentioned, coding, which is something I'm really big into right now, trying to learn as much as I can from this. So if you're also looking to learn something new, I would definitely check out Skillshare. And luckily, I have a link in the description, and the first 1,000 of my subscribers to use this link will get a free premium one-month trial to Skillshare. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some PSP games running on our Android device. Now, the very first thing you're going to need are some games. You'll need some PSP ROMs. Unfortunately, I can't tell you where to get them, but if you do a quick Google search or you rip your own, you'll be able to get everything you need. There are several different ways to get the games over to your device. First one would be download them directly on your phone or tablet. Next one would be transfer them directly to the internal storage of your device from your PC. But personally, the way I like to organize all of my retro games on my Android device is on an SD card. So if I open up a file explorer here, you can see that I have internal storage and my SD card. From here, I have a folder called Downloads. I've created a folder in here called ROMs and PSP. This is where my PSP games are. When it comes to the format of games that'll run with the emulator we're going to be using, there are two types. We have ISO, which you can see right here. .iso, this is going to be very common, and we also have CSO. So it really depends on how you rip your games or where you get them from, but a majority of them will probably be ISO, but just keep in mind, CSO will also work. So now that we have our games on our device, it's time to get the emulator, and for this, we're actually going to be using PPSSPP. You can get it from the Google Play Store. There's a gold version that you pay for, and it helps the developers out. just puts a little bit of money in their pocket for the hard work they do. You can always go with the free one here. We'll just install it. And for if some reason your device doesn't support Google Play, you can always head over to their website and download the APK from there and sideload it. So we've got it installed. Here it is, PPSSPP. We're going to start it up. Upon first start, we're going to have to allow access to storage. And it's going to look something like this. As you can see, we don't have our games ready to go. Now, the tablet that I'm on right now has Android 11, and they've kind of changed the way that we get our games over here. But uh, if you're on an older version of Android, this little up icon here will bring you right over to your SD card, if that's where you have them stored, and you can choose it from there. But since I'm on a later version of Android, I have to choose Browse. It's going to open up our File Explorer, and I need to navigate where I have my PSP games. So I'm already on my SD card. If they're on your internal storage, you can use that but I'm going to go to my SD. I have a folder in Downloads, ROMs, PSP, and here's my games in ISO and CSO format. I'm going to use this folder, and it's going to populate the list and automatically download some artwork for us so we know what we want to play. 
This section is fully touch compatible, but if you have a controller connected to your device like I do with an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth, you can actually just use the controller to navigate. If you're using something like a PS3 or a PS4 controller, it's probably already going to be mapped for you, but if not, we can head over to settings here, controls, control mapping, and from here you can tap on the corresponding button and press it on your physical controller. You can map all of your controls through here. It's really easy to do. So we have our games imported and we have our controller set up. If you're not using a controller, you can always use the on-screen controls, but personally I would recommend using a controller with an emulator like this. When it comes to PSP game performance, there are games that are easier to emulate than others. Some harder ones that come to mind are the God of War series, be it Chains of Olympus or Ghost of Sparta, Midnight Club, and Kill Zone. Those four games are really hard to emulate, and if you're trying to run those games on lower end devices, there is a good chance that it won't even run well even with uh, some of the hacks I'm going to show you here. So you kind of need to know that before going into it. There are some devices that just won't run all of these games at full speed. But for a majority of the phones on the market with the Snapdragon 662 and up, there are still tons of games that you're going to be able to play at full speed. The device I'm using right now has that Snapdragon 865, and like I mentioned, if you're on an 835 and up, you should have really good performance with PSP games on your Android tablet or phone. But there are tweaks that I'd like to show you. So from the main menu, we're going to go to Settings. The very top option here is our back end. We have OpenGL and Vulkan. Vulkan seems to be the go-to with these Snapdragon chips. You can always change it to OpenGL if you'd like to. Personally, I leave it at Vulkan. It just works out really well. Moving down the list a little bit, one of the main settings that really affects performance on basically all devices is the rendering resolution. Most of the time it's going to be set to auto, and with auto it's going to try to mimic your screen's resolution, and sometimes it might just be a bit too high. So even on my higher end devices, I stick with 3 to 4x resolution and it looks absolutely amazing. On lower end devices, you will have to go on down to 2 and 1. But just keep in mind that this section here is going to affect performance more than anything else within the PSP emulator. So if you're having trouble running a game at let's say 4x, drop it down a little bit until you can get full speed out of it. And even then, on lower end devices at 1x, there's a setting up here that you may need to change, and that's frame skip. Frame skip set to 1 will skip every other frame. So if the game was to run at 60 FPS without any frame skip on, the game will skip every frame and only run at 30. Does look a bit choppy, but it does allow lower end devices to run these games much better because if you were trying to run something like Chains of Olympus with no frame skip on a low end device, it would basically be unplayable until we turn a little bit of frame skip on. And this comes in really handy for low end devices. For something with an 835 and up, you really don't have to worry about it. So for this one here, I go to 4x, moving down a bit. We also have a couple speed ups. So we have lazy texture caching. This does help out with lower end stuff. If you're on a higher end phone, these are things that you really don't need to worry about. We also have curves quality. You can change this low, medium, high. This will help out just a tiny bit with performance. Filtering is usually set at 16x out of the box. I kind of drop it down to 4 for most everything. And again, this isn't going to be a world-changing performance game, but it could help out with lower-end stuff. Another thing I always like to change here is Show FPS Counter. I want to show both. This is going to give me a speed percentage and the FPS. And the last thing from the settings here, at least for this video, is full screen mode. Sometimes this does not come enabled, and as you can see, when I turned it off, we have our navigation buttons at the bottom. It does get in the way a little bit, so I turn full screen on. From here, I can kind of swipe up from the bottom to back up. So all of the settings that we just changed are actually going to take effect in every single game. Now, there are certain games that you might want a different configuration for, and that's where the specific game configuration comes into play. So something like Chains of Olympus, if I hold on it, it's going to open up a little menu here. Create game config, and this is only going to apply to this specific game. We'll go to game settings, and we have all of the same settings here. You can also change the controller scheme per game if you'd like to. So everything that we change inside of here is only going to take effect to this certain game. So if we go up or down, it's only going to be with this game here. 
and that really comes in handy for those harder to run games. Okay, so now we're ready to start a game. We're gonna go with Tekken Dark Resurrection. I'll just get into a little bit of gameplay. As you can see, we still have those on-screen controls on, and I'm gonna show you how to disable that in just a sec. Let me go ahead and get in here. Okay, so now we're playing a PSP game on our Android device. What I wanna show you is how to set up your controller to add a speed toggle, which actually really helps out with cutscenes just to speed through them a little faster, and our menu button. So we're gonna use our back button here. We're gonna to go to settings, controls, and if you wanna just totally disable the on-screen touch controls, you can go ahead and do it from here. Control mapping, and from here, we're gonna find speed toggle. I like setting this up as my L3 button, so if I press in on my L3 stick, it's gonna speed the game up for me. Sometimes I do click this while I'm playing, so it's really up to you. You can set this to any button, but it can't be a button you use while playing a game because it'll always speed toggle for you. Next on the list here, we wanna find home, and that's gonna be able to bring us out of the menu. From here, I set this to my R3 button. Press in on my right analog stick, and that brings me home from within a game. So if I go back and continue the game, if I press that right analog stick in, brings me here. If I press my left analog stick in, as you can see, it speeds up. And this really does help out for cutscenes, just to get through them a little faster. Press it again, speed toggle will be turned off. As for save states, we have four of them here, but keep in mind, inside of a game, you can also save. So if you get to a certain save point inside of the game that's supported by the game, it will work. But if you want to do a quick save here, just back out to the menu, save state. Uh, let's go ahead and go over here a little bit. Back up, load, be right back where I was. And that's personally what I like doing. Sometimes I just skip save states inside of a game and just save it directly in the PPSSPP emulator. The final thing I want to show you here is how much that rendering resolution affects performance. So here we have Chains of Olympus, and right now, We'll go to my game settings. We are at 5x resolution. It looks great, super clean here on this screen, and it's playing at 60 FPS, 100% speed. Up in the top right hand corner, you can see, dips down to around 59, but it's something I would never notice if I didn't have that on. I'm gonna go ahead and take this up to 10x, and I know that's a bit much, but this is a pretty powerful little tablet. So we're at 10x now. I'm gonna continue the game and uh, it just dropped half speed, a little over half speed. There's no frame skip or anything like that. This is just that rendering resolution jacked up. It really, really does make a difference when it comes to performance. It is the main performance setting inside of the PPSSPP emulator. So there is no way I'm gonna play this at 10X. And even if I was able to, this screen just really doesn't support that kind of a resolution. So I'll go back, and we're still at 10x. I'm gonna turn frame skip on. And here, you can see that at 10x, I can play this at 30, and it smoothed it up a lot. So frame skip skips every other frame. It does look a bit choppy to me, but sometimes you just have to do this with lower end devices. We're still at 10x, and uh, instead of running at 34 FPS, very, very laggy, we're at 30, half speed, skipping every other frame and the way it sits right now it is playable i mean it's much more enjoyable than the other way we were doing it trying to go to full speed at 10x so yeah that's going to wrap it up for this video just keep in mind i mean one of the most important settings to change inside of the pp sspp emulator on your android phone or tablet is that rendering resolution and if you're working with a lower end device you might have to turn frame skip on for some games but in the end i really hope this tutorial helped you out now in the description i'm going to leave a link to the pp sspp wiki page there's lots of great information over there if you have any questions let me know in the comments below but like always thanks for watching